Hi, this is Bill from Molten Voltage, and today we're going to show you how to change the default settings on Gquencer, the Rift Dispenser. Now, you don't ever need to do this if you don't want to. Out of the box, it's set up, ready to rock with the whammy. But if you want to get in and change some of the features, I'm going to show you how. The first thing you have to do is hold down button number one while you power it on. And you'll see it says Edit Globals. Now, when I let my finger off the button, it's going to go to MIDI Receive Channel 15. That's the channel, if you have a MIDI controller, like say the Gig Rig G2 or the Voodoo Lab ground control or our own master control, this is the MIDI channel that Gquencer is gonna respond to. Now, molten voltage gear is set up on MIDI channel 15, but some gear isn't, so you might wanna change this. All you have to do is turn the knob and set it to whatever MIDI channel you want. To advance to the next global, you just press button number one again and this is the whammy channel. This is the channel that Gquencer sends out its information to the whammy on. Now, I set it on channel 2 as the default. And I'll have another video that shows you how to set your MIDI channel on your whammy. It, it takes about two seconds. So if you want to change your whammy channel for whatever reason, again, you just turn the knob and uh, select the whammy channel you want. The next global is the whammy version. Now, out of the box, you selected which whammy version you wanted and it preloaded those presets. But let's say you started with a whammy 4 and you want to upgrade to a whammy 5 or a bass whammy. Well, this is how you do it. Now, the thing is, if you go and change your whammy version, it's going to erase all your presets. So you might want to back those up. So if I want to change my whammy version, I'm going to put it on DT here. I'll press the button. And again, it's reminding you here whether or not you want to erase all of your presets and by changing the whammy version. So you can say yes or no. If you say no, then it's going to abort your whammy version change. See, it went back to whammy version 5 here. Now, if I want to erase the presets, I'd go in here and I have to manually switch it over to yes, then I'll press this one again. Now, I don't want to erase my presets right now, and I don't want to change my whammy version. So we're going to put it back to no and move on to the next global. So if it's on the whammy version that's already stored, you just press the button again, and you get to tap autoplay. Now, what this means is when you switch to a tap tempo type program, does Gquencer automatically start the sequence when you do that, or does it wait for you to press the start stop button? The default is that the tap program start as soon as you switch to that program. If you don't like that, if you'd rather have it wait until you press the start button, then you switch it over to no. I'm going to keep it on yes. The next global is the loop off setting. So this is where Gquencer goes after the loop stops. Say you have a tap tempo loop running or a one shot. When you stop that loop, what setting does the whammy get sent to? Well, the default is the octave up setting with it on. When you see these little plus signs there, that means on. I'll, I'll rotate through the settings. And now we'll put it back over here to octave up. And with the two minus signs there, it's off. And you can see over on the whammy here, it shut itself off. So you can set it to go to whatever setting you like when the loop is stopped. The default is octave up with the effect on, but with the treadle rocked all the way back. So that's the one I found to be the most useful, and it saves some wear and tear on the relay inside the whammy. If you're switching on and off a whole lot, you might want to just keep it on a setting that, um, that keeps the effect on. But you can change it however you'd like. The next global is the control change step value. Now this is something, unless you're a real MIDI head, you're probably not going to really ever get into. But you can go through Gquencer's sequences using a MIDI control change. And that includes like an expression wheel or a pitch bender. And so you can run up and down through the sequence using a MIDI controller, which can be really fun. But again, it's, that's kind of an advanced feature. The next global is the program minimum. Out of the box, Gquencer stores 128 programs, but if you're using it as standalone pedal, I've set it up so it just goes through the first 32 presets. Well, if you want to change 
what preset it starts on and what preset it stops on, you can do that here. The default, obviously, is program 1, but you can run it up to, say, uh, program 28. So it'll just start at program 28, and then it'll increment up through there until it gets to the last one, and then it'll start over again. Now, it won't let me go above 32 because the next global you're going to see is the program max. So on the program minimum, we'll keep it at 1. And here's the program max. So if we want to use all 128 programs, we can do that. And again, this is, this is when you're stepping through the programs manually, when you're using Gquencer by itself. If you're sending MIDI program changes, you can instantly access any of the 128 programs. So, again, we'll set the program max back to 32. The next global is external tap adjust. We sell a side controller that duplicates these two buttons. This setting is set up to deal with the buttons that we use. Now, if you're a real do-it-yourselfer and you want to make your own external side controller, then you might need to go in and adjust this setting. Otherwise, you can ignore it. The next global is Q loop. Now, what Q loop means is when you are on one tap tempo program and it's going through it or a MIDI clock program and it's looping through it, and then you want to select a new program, you select that new program. Well, does that new program start right away, or does it wait until the sequence is done on the prior program? Most people like it where the sequence will continue all the way through before the next one starts. Most people like it that way, but if you want the sequence to change right when you press the program button here, you can make that happen. You can say never queue loops up. You can say it, do it just for MIDI clock programs, which means the tap ones won't queue up, but the MIDI ones will. You can say do it for all tap type programs. Or you can say do it just for the tap old programs. And old means you've set up the program to use the existing tempo rather than using some kind of stored tempo. So say you're on one sequence in a song and you want to switch to another sequence, but you don't want to lose your tempo. Well, you'd set up the program so it's an old type of tap program, meaning it'll use the old tempo. Now, if you want those kind of loops to queue up, that's what you set it to. But again, most people like it set to always, and that's the default. So finally, if you want to back up Gquencer, you can dump the programs off a of Gquencer, and you can dump it to a computer. It's in what's called system-exclusive format, SYSEX, S-Y-S-E-X. It's a, it's a MIDI format. And so you can dump your programs onto your computer. But what's really slick about Gquencer, you can actually connect two Gquencers and copy the programs from one to another. There'll be another demonstration video that shows how to do that. And when you dump the programs, you do it in banks of six programs. So you can do each of the banks individually. Or, and then there's the globals, that's a separate dump. Or you can say all data. So if you want to copy one Gquencer to another, you have it dump all data. Now to make it dump the data, you just press the start button. And you'll see it cycle through. It takes about two or three seconds to send each data chunk. And it'll go through sequentially. And on your receiving Gquencer, you'll see that it'll say program received and it'll say the same bank numbers. So that'll give you visual confirmation that your programs are being copied. We've sped up the film here, but again, it takes about 30 seconds to dump the entire Gquencer memory. So there's confirmation. It says sent program all data. So you know you've sent all the data now. And that's it for the globals. That's how you can take your Gquencer and tweak it to your own specifications. Again, out of the box, it's set up, and you probably should never have to change anything. But if you need to, that's how. So finally, to exit the globals menu, you just hold down the tap button again until it says global saved. As soon as you release the button, you'll see it'll go into Gquencer's startup. And that's all there is to it. Thanks a lot, and if you ever have any questions, you can always email me at questions at moltenvoltage.com. Take it easy.